why can we whites not see what is really happening to us? Although there are some whites that have seen and recognized what is happening in South Africa right now, the vast majority of people are just oblivious to it. History is a good teacher, so why don't we look at history to see if we can find any similarities to the situation we are experiencing in South Africa right now. Let us look at how we as the white minority are being treated. Even though we have supplied the tax burden to the country since 1994, and therefore we can say that we have financed the country since 1994, we have been constantly and on an increasing scale being pressed to contribute more and more while we are earning less and less and being systematically worked out of the economy by such things as BEE and triple B, triple E. We are being taxed at rates that are causing massive unemployment and poverty among whites. We have the farm attacks and murders which are escalating at an alarming rate. It is common knowledge that killing the farmers is taken directly out of the textbooks of communism. It is no secret that the ANC government was founded under the flag of the Communist Party of South Africa and still is controlled by communism as an end goal. Something we all know has failed in every single instance it has ever been tried worldwide throughout history. The white population are a direct target of this drive to communism. We have the drive to disarm the public, I say public in inverted commas, which in essence is nothing but a ploy to disarm the white population. I wonder where we have seen this strategy used before. It is public knowledge that before any mass killings of the population by a government or government forces or troops, it has always been preceded by a disarming of the population so that they could not pose any resistance to the government forces. It has already been proposed that self-defense not be an acceptable reason to own a firearm. It has already been said by government officials that they would like to disarm the public totally and to have a situation where only armed forces, namely the police and the military, have firearms. It has also been proposed that all security companies, which are largely white-owned, not be allowed to own any semi-automatic weapons at all. This is clearly because the government see them as a future threat. We have a murder rate in this country that is something nightmares are made of. There are war zones that do not have the death rate we do on a daily basis. Granted, most murders that take place Every day are black-on-black -black murders and are confined to the townships, etc. But not all. The murders that take place outside of the townships are almost exclusively black-on-white. We have the farm attacks and murders where most of the time nothing is taken or stolen. We have farmers and their family, sometimes very young children, being tortured to death in the most horrific ways you could imagine. We have people in the suburbs having their homes invaded by black criminals being robbed and very often killed. Let's face it, when last have you heard of a white person committing a home invasion, a farm attack, a hijacking, etc.? I'm sure it has happened before, but the numbers are so small as to be neglected as irrelevant. All these things are almost exclusively black on white. There can be no argument against it. These are the facts. If anyone stands back and takes a good look at all of this, how is it possible they could come to a conclusion anything other than that we are being slowly and systematically targeted for extermination? It does not take a rocket scientist to see this. We have the world's most knowledgeable person on the subject of genocide, Dr. Gregory Stanton, saying that South Africa is in the process of a genocide. We might not be experiencing mass slaughtering of people in the streets yet, but we fulfill all the requirements of the process of genocide. I say process because it is a systematic progression of events and circumstances that have to be met before people are willing to go ahead out into the streets, killing other people at random. South Africa is very close to that final stage where exactly that will happen. These things listed above are just a few of the glaring clues to what is happening to us, the white minority in South Africa, and yet... There are only a tiny percentage of us willing to take an objective look at the situation and see it for what it really is. A planned and government-sanctioned effort to get rid of the whites in South Africa. Nothing more, nothing less. I think it has a lot to do with us not wanting to consider losing what we have. No matter how bad things are, there is still a large amount of whites in South Africa who are still living very well and are comfortable in the positions that they are. They therefore are unwilling to even consider the possibility of losing it all. This absolutely blows my mind because these people 
although a lot of them own their own successful businesses, seem to be stupid enough to think that if they ignore the situation, it either does not exist or will somehow just go away. Obviously, this is very naive, an extremely dangerous way of thinking. To these people, I have one thing to say. Wake the F up and grow up. Do you not realize that if you and others like you do nothing to stop what is happening here, a stage will be reached where you absolutely will lose everything you have? That is not an opinion, that is a fact. Depending on how comfortable you are living, that is, how much money you have to spend on isolating yourself from what is happening right now, your turn will come eventually, trust me. So I ask again, why is it that us whites just can't see what is really happening to us? Just a quick update on the interview I was supposed to be having with a psychologist. I'm afraid I've been given the runaround for too long now and have given up on it. I am, however, in the process of locating another psychologist and hopefully this time I will get the interview I'm looking for. I apologize for the delay, but it was really out of my control. I will keep you posted on my progress in this regard. Please remember to like and share this video on other social platforms. It's the only way that my message gets out there. Also, leave a comment. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, now would be a good time to click the subscribe button. While you are at it, click on the bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload new content. If you would like to support my channel, in the description section of this video, I have provided ways in which both local as well as international subscribers can support me. I've also provided a Bitcoin as well as a Litecoin wallet address for those who would like to support me via crypto. To those that do support me, I say a huge thank you and express my deepest appreciation. Until next time.